So usually when I do these videos, I kind of try to like vet them a little bit. This one, I'm going in pretty blind. I didn't vet this at all. This is something that uh, one of you guys sent me. This is called Now Christians Are Haters? Question mark. Market Faith Ministries, Practical Apologetics. All right. By the way, where do you fucking people find this shit? This video is not like a popular video. This guy's got 13 subscribers. He's got two fucking ratings. I mean, like, where did you fucking guy? I mean, I guess it's this has got 418 views and like 160 comments. So I guess some people have talked about this. But I'm fucking shocked that you guys like can dredge up these like super obscure little Christian channels like this. Anyway, let's take a look and see what's going on with this guy. Recently, Mike Johnson, the speaker. Oof. <laughs> that fucking audio, bro. That is hideous. Oh, it's super t turned down, too. ...of the U.S. House of Representative selected Pastor Jack Hibbs to deliver the opening... What the fuck, man? Is your microphone underwater, bro? <laughs> this is a terrible audio quality. ...prayer for the House. Hibbs is the... Oh, my God. It's so overblown, dude. You, I mean, I, I, I understand mic issues are hard. I've definitely put out some videos where my mic settings were wrong and it just sounded like absolute ass. But this, your, fight, your mic is totally blown the fuck out, bro. The pastor of Calvary Chapel, Chino Hill in Southern California. When he did that... Oh my god. Dude, fix your fucking mic. Hey, if you like this clip, you might like the full stream, which I do every Sunday, more or less, over on the Pessimist Productions Patreon. Link down below. Thank you kindly. He went crazy. The backlash for that was spearheaded by representatives Jared Huffman and Jamie Raskin. Both of these guys identify themselves as non-religious humanists. Those fucking pieces of shit. Non-religious humanists, huh? What is the world coming to? They helped found the Congressional Free Thought Caucus in the U.S. House. This is a group that was a... Oh, my God. So they're basically demons is what I'm hearing. These guys are fucking demonic, possessed fools who have said in their heart there is no God. ...established to promote policy solutions based on what they call reason and science... What they call raising and science, and what I call a bunch of horse pucky. <laughs> and to defend secular government. In other words, these guys are con got a creaky chair too. <laughs> I hate when I can't even f focus on the video because he's got this creaking ass chair. It's like. And his fucking audio is like, oh, you know. what is with the aspect ratio of this fucking video, too? Why is there like so much black space around this motherfucker? Could you not figure out how to fucking bring the video to the edge, man? Confirmed atheists who have absolutely no use whatsoever for Christians and Christianity. Man, that just rankles your fucking butt hair, don't it? They fucking atheists say they ain't got no use for people like me. Oh, well, <laughs> like, sorry, you're not useful. I don't have to tell you. They sent a letter to Johnson and to the House chaplain that described Hibbs as a radical Christian nationalist and hate preacher. And they did this because he has publicly advocated for traditional Christian values in the culture. In other words, they did this because that's accurate, right? <laughs> so who's this? Hibbs guy, let's look him up. Jack Hibbs, all right, let's see. What's this guy all about? Various criticisms. This is of the uh, the church itself that he uh, is the pastor of. Various criticisms of the organization of the uh, pastorate role in the organization exists. For example, Chuck Smith, who is the founder of this particular church, has been criticized for drawing connections between disasters, earthquakes, the September 11th attacks, and the divine wrath against homosexuality and abortion. Uh, Calvary Chapel leaders, including Smith, were subject to a lawsuit alleging that they knew or should have known that a minister named Anthony 
Iglesias was prone to sexual abuse when they moved him from ministry positions in Diamond Bar, California, to Thailand, to Post Falls, Idaho. The male has two 14-year-old boys in California in 2004. The lawsuit stemmed from events in Idaho, but an alleged abuse occurred before, in or before 2003. The church uh, was dismissed as a defendant in the lawsuit. As a result of what he saw... As micromanaging church elders and board members, Chuck Smith used an independent board of elders when he took the senior pastor role at Calvary Chapel. Smith subsequently wrote that senior pastors should be answerable to God, not to a denominational hierarchy or the board of elders. Christianity Today says that Smith's Moses model, in which senior pastors do not permit the author their authority to be challenged, can lead to churches that are resistant to accountability. In response, Smith says he is following the authority structure that God used when Israel was under the rule of Moses. According to one article, Smith's book, Calvary Chapel Distinctives, uh, teaches that senior pastors should be answerable to God, not to denominational hierarchy or board of elders. So basically, like, they want no accountability. Um, in November 2016, Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa left the Calvary Chapel Association and formed the Calvary Chapel Global Network. The latter continues to count the association's 1,700 churches as members unless they opt out. So this is just some, you know, this uh, Jack Hibbs guy is just the pastor at some fucking right wing nightmare church where the pastors say that they're accountable only to God, not any sort of like human oversight whatsoever, which is always a suspicious thing. In his prayer, Hibbs called for repentance of our national sins. Now, when these atheists heard that, they saw that as code for his, quote, radical Christian nationalist agenda. Yeah, I mean, when you tell the nation it needs to repent for its sins, I feel like that's not even code for your ra that's not code for your radical theocratic agenda. That's just like your radical theocratic agenda on naked display. There's no fucking code there. It's not like some kind of subtle fucking wink and a nod. It's not a dog whistle. It's fucking just overt. Because he advocates for Christian values, the anti-Christian contingent in Congress literally hate him. There is no anti-Christian contingent in Congress, okay? Both of these political parties are some God-bothering nitwits as far as I'm concerned. I mean, look at Joe Biden's State of the Union address. After he, you know, Adderall screamed a fucking semi-coherent fucking speech about things of actual national importance... He closed it all off with God bless the troops. God bless America. God bless the troops. God bless the troops. God bless America. And his cohorts don't see the irony of their complaints. They believe that their beliefs are right and that Hibbs Christian beliefs are immoral. But based on what? Based on reason? Based on like a concern for empirical reality based on giving a shit about the truth. Well, here's what they believe. They believe that Christian beliefs are an affront. To Quit making fun of the way I say both. All right. I know I put an L in it. I don't know why that is to me trying to say the word both makes me seem, it makes me sound like a fucking cow in my mind. I can't, I need the L it's let me have the crutch of the L. All right of pluralism and religious diversity. It's interesting that they don't see the anti-pluralism of their own point of view. If we had a completely secular government in this country, would people still be allowed to be Christians in this country? Yes. That's why they're, that's why the view of the secularists is pluralistic. If we had a Christian theocracy, would people be allowed to be literally anything other than Christians? No. That's why their point of view is not pluralistic, okay? Have we figured this out? Have we sussed out the fucking shit? Okay, cool. That atheist beliefs are true and that Christian beliefs are false, and they are all in on the transgender and homosexual movements. Yep. I'm all in. I mean, not necessarily like the movements. I'm all in on not persecuting trans and gay people because there's no reason to do that. <laughs> so like if that may if that's a movement then okay, but I don't really think of it as a movement. I think of it as just like common human decency. 
And what they want to do now is they want to invite Dan Barker to have a prayer for the House. Now, if you don't know, Dan Barker's the head of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and he's a cool based an outspoken, hardcore anti-Christian atheist. Good. Well, I mean, if you actually believe in pluralism, as you just said, that should be fine with you. You should be perfectly willing to have, you know, the Christian point of view has been heard. A Christian prayer has been invoked. So now an atheist should be allowed to come and speak as well. And that would be true pluralism, right? He's been responsible for filing many, many lawsuits against various uh, governments, uh, local governments and schools to try to get any semblance of Christian ideas out of the public square. I'm pretty sure that the Freedom From Religion Foundation has like, if they filed any lawsuits to get religion taken out of the public square, it's been in the form of things like taking God off the money, you know, uh, not displaying the Ten Commandments at a courthouse, stuff like that. Um, I'm pretty sure that no, at no point in the uh, history of the Freedom From Religion Foundation have they ever tried to remove Christianity from like any sort of private home. They've never tried to shut down a church, as far as I know. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the Freedom From Religion Foundation is a vastly different organization than what I conceive it to be. But I'm pretty sure that like they've just defended the line of separation between church and state and have never actually like gone after Christians. They've never tried to shut down a church or stop someone from, you know, uh, praying in the privacy of their own home or even in a public space. I'm a non-theistic chaplain. So here's the deal. Why is Hibbs considered a hate preacher for advocating for Christian values? Yet Barker is not a hate preacher for advocating atheist values and putting down Christians. Well, here's why. Because um, Hibbs is a hate preacher who says that a bunch of fucking, you know, gay and trans people should be, I don't know. I don't know what his prescription is, but I mean, like, even if we're super charitable, he probably thinks that they should, like, repent, right? He probably thinks that their lifestyle is wrong and evil and sinful, and that they should somehow be penalized for um, practicing it. Whereas pretty much no one who is uh, like openly, I mean, even like someone who's an anti-theist like me, I would never say like, let's shut down a church. Let's stop a Christian from praying because that would be way too much of an overreach for me to presume that I can control another person's life uh, when they're not directly harming me or anyone else, I think is a preposterous notion. Now, that being said, there are certain measures I'd like to see in this country, like the taxation of churches, for instance. But I think that's completely reasonable. Businesses are taxed. Individuals are taxed. The fact that churches are not taxed, I think, is preposterous. And... Um, especially when so many of them are raking in so much money. So there is no actual persecution of Christians going on in this country. There is persecution of trans people and gay people going on in this country. Although thankfully it's less and less as time goes on. Honestly, who really is the hater? You guys are the haters. <laughs> like it's not a contest. Truth is Christians are not haters. Just because we recognize biblical values as right, doesn't mean that we hate those who <laughs> You guys don't give a rat's ass about biblical values. One of your biggest tentpole issues right now is abortion. There's nothing in the Bible that condemns abortion. In fact, there's the whole verse about the, the drinking of the bitter waters that will, you know, cause a woman to miscarry. And that's presented as like a good thing. So that's actually a pro-abortion verse in the Bible. Your other big issue right now is trans people. There's absolutely nothing in the Bible about trans people whatsoever. Your other big issue is gay people. There's like a throwaway verse in Leviticus, a book that you guys pretty much ignore the entirety of except for that verse. There's nothing coming out of the mouth of Jesus that condemns gay people. All of your big social issues that you claim are these like biblical values, like it's not really what the Bible preaches. And a bunch of the stuff the Bible does preach 
you guys completely the fuck ignore. Like the Bible says to, you know, give away your possessions to the poor. You guys despise and revile the poor. And in fact, so many of you guys accumulate massive amounts of wealth for yourselves and share none of it with anybody else. The Bible says to be kind and charitable to migrants. You guys hate migrants. So pretty much everything the Bible tells you to do, you don't. And pretty much everything you actually do believe is not supported by the Bible at all. So you're completely full of shit when you come here with this biblical values nonsense to me. You're a cretinous fucking buffoon and you're just using the Bible as a shield to cloak your little hate movement. So fuck you, go fuck yourself, you bag of fucking fat, ugly shit. You don't. In fact, we love them enough to tell them the truth about sin <laughs> that will destroy their eternity. On the other side, they really are haters. They literally want to destroy those who disagree with them. No, I don't give a fuck. Dude, if you wanna go in church every fucking Sunday, I don't care if you go every fucking day, and you want to clasp your hands and whisper to the invisible man and hope that he likes you and hope that he invites you to prom, then be my fucking guest, dude. You want to waste your fucking time on that horse shit? Why would I give a shit enough to stop you? I don't care. Just don't fucking legislate it. Just don't come to me and say, I got to fucking respect it. In I mean, like, I'll respect your right to do it, but I'm not respecting your right to have it influence legislation that affects my ass, okay? Christians should never give up their beliefs because of opposition. Instead, <laughs> we ought to continue to proclaim the truth that real life is only found in relation to Jesus Christ. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. No, it's not. <laughs> real life encompasses far more than Jesus Christ. There are so many people who do not believe in Jesus Christ for one reason or another. There are people who are... Um, Atheists, of course. There are people who are apathetic towards the entire concept of religion who are, I guess, atheists by default but don't identify as such. People who are just non-religious. There are people who believe in other religions like Buddhism or Wicca. There are people who believe in other religions where Jesus is like a spiritual figure but he's not the Messiah, such as Islam. So there are plenty of people who do not center their lives around Jesus that are nonetheless living real lives. I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. You're smoking crack, bro. Pang in the chat fucking is calling my bluff. Luke 13, 2, and Jesus said to them, you know what? Fuck those poor people. Only the billionaires are getting into heaven. Amen. All right, but like aside from that verse, you know. This is Freddie Davis, president of Market Faith Ministries, a worldview discipleship ministry. Check out all of our worldview resources at www.marketfaith.org. You know what? I fucking will. Let's check it out. Have Freddie Davis or Tal Davis come speak at your church. Ooh, that sounds fun. All right, about us, what we do, worldview resources. Okay. Fighting the culture war. That sounds fun. Oh, here we go. Abortion. Gauging the culture war, evolution, exclusivism, fallacies and naturalism, homosexual movement, God and science, Islam, marriage, modern American society, politics, pornography, race, social justice, and stem cell research. Why do I feel like I'm not going to be able to find a single based take in the bunch? I'm kind of curious. What's the, what's the race take? No, I don't, you know, okay. The fragility of white fragility, the worldview basis, a biblical view of race. I'm just wondering if it's going to be, oh, I'm just looking to see if there's overt racism here or if it's just like whiny white people mad that, uh, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so they're not, all right, so they're not going overt racism. That's good. Just the soft racism of like, how dare you criticize white people? Homosexual movement, uh, transgenderism, and the biblical worldview. Let's see. National Public Radio did a report on the topic of transgenderism in churches in which they interviewed Buckley. I'm assuming that's A.J. Buckley, a transgender Episcopal priest. Okay. 
uh, and got his take on how churches should deal with people who claim to be transgender. The report made several significant points. Transgender religious leaders say scripture should be should inspire inclusive congregations. Pro-transgender voices are emerging within Christianity. Many Christians are rethinking the biblical stories they already know. Transgender people themselves read scripture in the same way, blah, 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 blah. All right, so let's see. What's the problem here? What's, what's the big deal? What's wrong with this liberal? All right, here. The very essence of transgenderism is based on the false belief about the nature of sexuality. Already we have a problem here because transgender is not a sexuality. It's a gender identity. You know, I've met people who are transgender and completely asexual, have no interest in sexuality whatsoever. You don't have to believe, you don't have to be even remotely sexual to be transgender. There's an attempt to literally change the very structure of reality. I mean, wouldn't all technology fall under that banner of changing the structure of reality? Like the structure of reality changed with the invention of the wheel and the printing press and all sorts of different inventions throughout history. You can't just be like, the structure of reality is changed, therefore... God created the natural universe to exist in a particular way and attempting to turn a man into a woman or a woman into a man is a rejection of God's creation, thus a rejection of him. Well, then how come the Bible doesn't say a fucking word about it, huh? But it is not an attempt to restructure physical reality. It is an effort to change God's plan for humanity itself. Blah, 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 blah. What do you guys, what do you guys propose? I want to know what they want to do. They won't fucking actually come out and say what they want to do about it, which is always suspicious to me. Transgenderism is an affront to God's plan for human beings. What do you want to do about it? Uh, <laughs> they never want to say, do they? I wonder why. The